So let's talk about Rust, which is the cure for all this. So Rust has been winning awards for years as the number one most desired programming language by developers. Most companies won't let people use it yet because it's still in development and not mature enough to satisfy higher up executives, but programmers would like to start using it years ago, and you will see why. So I installed the Rust compiler. Here's Hello World in Rust. So, and the uh, tutorial I worked from was designed for complicated projects with many files, so you make a folder and put everything in a separate folder. That's not really necessary, but it's the way I did it. Make a directory, go there, and edit a file called hello.rs, and here's the code that prints hello world. So nothing special, print line, Rust says hello, with some boilerplate like main and stuff. So that much is no, no surprise. You compile it with Rust C, and then you run it. So that will compile it, and then run it, and it says Rust says hello. Okay, so that means my compiler is working, and I can do simple things. So now we're going to do um, an integer data type. So we go here and make an integer program, and there it is. All right, so we let i equal 1 without specifying the data type, but here we set j unsigned 32 equal minus 5, and then we print them out. So if you don't tell it what it is, it'll make some default decision. I think sign 32, although I don't remember. Now if I compile that and run it, Rust C, it complains. You cannot put a minus sign there because it's an unsigned integer. Now this may not seem awesome, but this is awesome. In C, you can do horrible things. You can define a character. You can then give it a number. You can add to the number. You can put a negative number. And all that makes no bloody sense at all. And that's what leads to all these problems. You should define the variable and put in the right kind of data. And Rust will not let you do something stupid, like put a negative number in which they're intending a positive number, which you absolutely can do in C. You can totally do it. It leads to god-awful disasters. But it assumes, oh, you are, must understand at the binary level how the bits work, and you have brilliantly decided that you want to have FFFF at the start of that, and this is the fastest way to accomplish it, because that's what they were thinking when they designed C. They're thinking, you're super elite, and you have a binary flipping plan bit by bit to accomplish this task in less cycles because you're a super elite binary genius. They don't think that you're a normal human, and you intended to have a positive number, and you accidentally put the negative number in the wrong place, no, no, we would never question your wisdom. You must have a plan whereby this is utterly brilliant and will accomplish the goal because the super elite guys did that. But the rest of us would be willing to use more computer cycles and not have to cry so much over the bugs caused in our code by ordinary mistakes. That's why they'd rather write in Rust. So now we're going to add some numbers, and this will be another example of why she will break your heart. So here's Rust. We're going to add some numbers. Um, all right, this is just more about Rust. So here I set A equal to 1, and then I set A equal to A plus 1. So now it should be 2. Then I print out the results. Okay, now I compile this with Rust C. And again, you can't do that, because if you set A equals to 1, that makes it an immutable 1, a constant that can't be changed. If you want it mutable, you have to say mutable. So that's something to get used to. And at first, that may seem like wasting your time, but again, You'll be glad you specified what that variable should be, and then it was able to tell if you did the wrong thing with it later. That's the idea. So now let's have an overflow. Nano OVC dot C. Here's one of the simple overflows, the kind we didn't do before. This is an integer overflow. I define a character variable x. I set it equal to 230 which is complete bullshit, but you can do it in C. I put a number in a character, and not only that, that's not a valid ASCII character. The valid ASCII character can only go up to 127. So in a hundred ways from Sunday, this is a terrible thing to do, but we've been doing it for 30 years, and I never thought twice of it. Oh, it's a byte. You can put anything in a byte. Okay, now we're going to add to it in a loop. Add that number and make it bigger and bigger. Let's see how this works. So we compile that thing and then run it. Okay, so X is 231, then 233, and 236. I keep adding more and more. Then it rolls over like an odometer and turns into 2 and 10. Now, how is the developer supposed to know this? I added something to it. Now it got smaller. 
Why did you do this to me? Why? This is why now I have a problem, and there's a whole bunch of attacks like this where they try to make sure you don't put in more than 100 characters, but all you have to put in is like 2 to the 32 plus 100, and it'll wrap around and think it's small again. Um, and the poor developer is like, I was supposed to know this was going to happen. I was supposed to put in an if statement to watch for this. Why did you do this to me? This is C. This does not happen in Rust. This is the same program in Rust. There it is. I start, I make a mutable, unsigned integer variable of 230. Then I make a loop and add to it. So when I compile that and run it, it runs. And when it was going to wrap around, it crashes and tells you you attempted to add with overflow. So instead of just getting the wrong answer and proceeding along and creating a disaster, it tells you something's wrong. You need to fix your code. This is much friendlier to a developer. You get a warning, you know something's wrong, you deal with it instead of just having your code run ahead and do stupid wrong things without telling you. Then there's a string overflow, the kind we've been exploiting like crazy. So let's put this in C. All right. All right, and now I'm going to compile it. Um, GCC minus O. Okay. And then run it. Okay. So I have two strings. String 1 and string 2. This one is at 4FB. This one is at 4F6. Right. That's pretty far apart. That's about 10 bytes apart or 8 bytes apart or something. This one contains A. That one contains B. So the new value for string 2 is going to be CCCC. And now it works. String 1 contains A, string 2 contains C, and they're still there. So this much worked. But what if I put in a longer new value? Whoa, whoa, I hit the wrong key. Okay, there. What if I put in a lot of Cs? String 1 contains A's, string 2 contains B's. Now, string 1 contains C's, and string 2 contains more C's. So I put data in string 2, and it changed what was in string one. Imagine the developer. What the fuck? You put data in one variable, it changes data in another variable. How was I supposed to know that would happen and see that coming? And where am I supposed to put an if statement to prevent that? And why am I writing in this language, which exists only to drive me insane? <laughs> and as you can imagine, this does not happen in Rust. Here's the same program in Rust. Right. It's almost exactly the same code. And you can compile it and run it. And here it is. All right. And uh, it's a warning, but not a crash, so I'm not going to worry about it. So here is string 1 contains A, string 2 contains Bs. One of them is at 0, 0.50 and the other is at 0, 0.68. So they're not very far apart. So if I put in a new value for one of them, CCCC, a short value, it works fine. Now it adds it to the previous value, which is a little screwy, but that's not the end of the world. It didn't change the wrong string, at least. Now, if I wanted to put in a lot of C's, whoops, hit it again. Got to hit capital C instead of control C. There we go. So I put in a lot of C's. Okay. And now string one contains all the C's and strings two did not change. And just to bend your mind, the addresses did not change. This was at 0, 050, and this was at 0, 0.68. Now, I put in a lot more than can fit in between there, and the reason, of course, is double indirection. What these addresses contain is not the strings. They contain a pointer to the strings, and when you put in a bigger string, it changed the pointer to point to where there was room enough for the big string. Just like I kept saying C did not do. The stack is not big enough. You put in a lot of data. It continues to make the stack too small. Rust does not do that. It, if you put in more junk, it will find some place and allocate room for the new junk and put it there, just like every other modern language, like Python and Java and everything. That's why, you know, in a way, we shouldn't have all these security problems. We're just using an obsolete language, which was in a time when we needed every single clock cycle to be preserved at the expense of human life and uh, at least programmer sanity. And you can use GDB to examine the rust and see that it's double indirection, as you'd think it would be. So that's the buffer overflows not causing a problem in C. And then there's command injection, by the way. 
which you can still do in Rust. I mean, command injection is because you decided to write code, which would then call like system and execute a string. And that's your decision to write that kind of lunacy. And you can do that in Rust. And if you do it in Rust, you still have the same problem. Now, by the way, you have to turn on like dangerous features. <laughs> but anyway, you can do it in Rust. And then you have command injection, as you would think. Yeah, but I mean, you have to work hard to be stupid, but you know, that's the thing. It, it can't save you from that. But um, by the way, you can do some stuff about dangling pointers and memory leaks. I got some demonstrations here. You can do a heap overflow. And um, if you make a heap overflow in Rust, it again does not overflow. And you can go in the debugger and it does the same as before. It will move the strings as necessary. If you put in something too big to fit in the heap chunk, it will just move it to somewhere else where there's enough room instead of crashing and burning like she would with a heap overflow. But you need to do like funky things with mem allocation? No, uh, no, in fact, one awesome thing about Rust, you remember, then there's double free, you know, in C you have to run m alloc to reserve space on the heap and then you have to run free. Mm -hmm. And if you forget to run free or you run it twice, disaster happens. Yeah. This cannot happen in Rust. In Rust, you do not run m alloc and free. In Rust, what you do is you define this thing in a scope. That puts it on the heap, and when you exit the scope, it automatically frees. That's it. You don't yeah, write the free. It figures out, yeah, it figures out when you're done, and then it frees it. This reminds me of like the um, dill flaws in Windows. You know, when you launch a program, Windows says, I'm sorry, I'm missing XYZ123 dot dill. And I'm like, where am I supposed to get that? Because it's because you uninstalled another program, and when you uninstalled it, it said, "Are you done using XYZ one two three dot dill?" Yes or no? And I'm like, "Hell damn if I know." And and you know, Linux solved this problem in like 1980 with a thing called the link counter. How many programs are using this file? There's a link counter. Every program you delete that's no longer using this file decreases it. When the link counter hits zero, it's safe to delete that file. But Microsoft never got the memo, so they don't know how many files are using that dill. And it's the same kind of thing here. I mean, this is so brilliant, but uh, the people that wrote C did not think of this. So there is no double free in Rust. There is no dangling pointer in Rust. And uh, all right, you can examine this stuff in the debugger and see it. And there's the dangling pointer and so on. So it's pretty cool. And here's using free correctly in C. And there is no free in Rust. You can't make that mistake. Anyway, and then there's one where you play with memory leaks. So you get to see a few of the irritating problems, largely fixed by Rust, which makes me appreciate why people love it so much. If I was a developer, I would love this language. If I do stupid things, it will tell me I can fix them. I don't have to have my code crash in production and send out patches and all that garbage. All of these memory corruption exploits are caused by C. Although, to be fair, if you wrote our code in raw assembler, I think we'd have the same problem. But if you use any other modern language, your code will be a little bigger and a little smaller, but it won't have any of these security problems. Rust apparently is as fast as C when compiled. That's why they're really going for it in the kernel of Windows and the kernel of Linux. They should really, a lot of people are pushing for it and making, convincing people that this is what we got to do. Just rewrite the core, not the whole thing, but the core in Rust. <laughs>